the scale there. I saw the gentleman adjusting the microphone much lower. <laughs> Good morning again. It's a pleasure to be here. Your dear rector and my brother in Christ, Ricardo, is a very clever gentleman, you know, because he said to me, he said, what are you doing on the 10th of December? I said, I don't know, i got to check my, so you know, I pull up my phone. He said, I don't have anything in the schedule. He said, all right, you're the preacher. <laughs> I said, that's, that's very clever of you. It reminded me so much of... Uh, one time, Charlie Sheen was, uh, not, not the Charlie Sheen that you know, but Charlie Sheen, <laughs> was going into Philadelphia to give a talk. And uh, on his way into Philadelphia, he lost his way, was predating you know, navigational systems. And so he stopped by the side of the road and he saw some mischievous young men and he said, you know, how do you get to City Hall? And so they said to him, well, why are you going? He says, well, you know, I'm going to give a talk about how to get to heaven. <laughs> they say, you're going to give a talk about how to get to heaven when you don't even know how to get to sea. <laughs> <laughs> Today we give thanks to God for my brother. It's hard to believe that one year has passed. The years are passing so quickly these days that uh, I sort of check the dates not so much by the months in the calendar but by the events that are happening so that when I look and I see my son is a junior in college I know that hopefully crossing all fingers we have one more year of school <laughs> and, and, and you know he's very he's like Ricardo he's very clever when he wants money he calls his mother <laughs> God called me. I feel so much like uh, if you know that show with Miss Bouquet, you know, when her son would call and, uh, and the father says, There's no money, there's no money, there's no money. She says, No, he doesn't want any money. And then two minutes later, he hears her say, How much to send? <laughs> and uh, he, he knows he's in trouble. So today, as we gather on this day, the second Sunday of Advent, we gather and we hear the scriptural readings telling us, prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare a way for the Lord. I want to talk to you on the last verse of the gospel for today. I have baptized you with water, but there comes one after me who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This one doesn't say fire, but I like the translation. It says, I will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. So I was sort of trying out my message on my wife and I was saying, you know, in the scriptures, you know, it is evident that certain people have roles. And I was saying to her, not R-O-L-L-S, like I have. <laughs> I, I almost was going to say like you and I have, but, but, watch I, yourself. but I, wanted, <laughs> watch yourself. I wanted to I wanted to celebrate her birthday this coming time. So, so since I I did not want to be spoken of in the past days, I said rules. And, but the rules that I'm talking about is R O L E S. And uh, if we look at the scriptural story, we see that Abraham had a rule. God called Abraham to do a specific task. And when God calls us, we got to get going. We can't be comfortable. We can't sit still. And sometimes he calls us when we're young. Sometimes he calls us when we're not so young. <laughs> <laughs> Moses had a rule. Left the comfort of the palace to be a voice to the people of God. And John the Baptist understood that he had a role to be a voice in the wilderness. Now you know, oft times as Episcopalians, 
and as good church folk, when we hear about wilderness, we say, well, that, that doesn't apply to us, you know, because, you know, we, we, we are such creatures of comfort and we live so well now. We, we sometimes think that there's no wilderness. But the truth is, my dear friends, that right now, right now, on this side, we are going through a bit of wilderness. Amen? Amen. It doesn't only have to be, wilderness doesn't only speak to dry shrubs. Sometimes, wilderness speaks to the emptiness that people feel in their lives. We talk so often of the working poor. You're making money, but you can't make ends meet. That's wilderness for some folks, my dear friends. People are struggling. And so we have to be a voice to those people. And when I say we, I don't just mean the ordained. I mean the whole people of God. We have to be a voice, voices in the wilderness. To give hope to the hopeless. To comfort the afflicted. To tell them not to trust in presidents and princes. But to trust in God. Amen. Amen. I trust in God. And so no matter who is in the White House, who is in Congress, who is the mayor, not that we don't have to hold these people accountable. This is not to give them a pass. But this is to say that as a people of God, we put our trust in God. And we will continue to be voices in the wilderness. Making a pathway, a highway for the Lord. A highway for the Lord. Don't we like to get on the highway? Because when we're on the highway, we know there's a clear path. So often the side streets are filled with snow and sludge and muck. And, but where there's a highway, there's a path. Oh, we were so glad to get on the highways this morning. Because we knew that we would see black top. My wife would be saying, slow down, slow down. <laughs> but where there's a highway, there's a path to God. And so, St. Albans, New Brunswick, has to be about making highways for God. Years ago, you know, when I was back in Trinidad, my homeland. I don't know who put it on my desk, but it is a saying that has always stayed with me. The road to progress is always under construction. Isn't that a rich thing? I don't know who put it on my desk. Somebody wanted to give me a hint. <laughs> and it has stayed with me. I have been ordained a little longer. 32, 32 years as a priest. Lying by gray hair. Not, not all of it came from Ricardo. <laughs> but when we get going, we need to be mindful of that. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we think that what our ancestors and our, our forefathers and foremothers did before us. That we should be on easy street, right? But we're not. We're not. I went to the Civil Rights Museum in Atlanta and it was heartbreaking to sit at the lunch counters and there's a nice simulation where you can put on the headphones and, and sort of get a sense of what our sisters and brothers experience. And I couldn't help but feel that I, you know, I, I, I got a sense of it, but yet I didn't get a sense of it because I could get up and walk off, walk off without anybody spitting at me. That's what our forefathers and our ancestors and sisters and brothers had to experience. And so when we go to these places, I'm happy that they have these places because, you know, sometimes, so often, we can forget the struggle. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. But don't
don't get comfortable because the road to progress is always under construction. My brother was telling me that as he came in this morning, he, someone in his past life, Father Taylor, this one is probably for him, <laughs> but always used to say to him, you may be the priest, but you better make sure everything's functioning. I learned that lesson very early on in my ministry. Not that you can't rely on the wonderful voices of your choir, the trusts of great wardens and great lay people and great lay leadership, but it is always incumbent on you as God's ordained to be out front. Sometimes that means your head gets chopped off. <laughs> Not literally chopped off. <laughs> John the Baptist suffered that because he wasn't afraid to be a voice. And I don't want to see you chop off my brother's head. But I know you will hold him accountable. I know you will support him. I know you will pray for him. I know you will care for him. I said to my congregation at the cathedral, I'm going to party with Ricardo. <laughs> he said, well, you're going to have a good time. I said, yes, but he's making me work before I <laughs> And they said, they're glad to know that you're treating him well. They're glad to know that you're loving him and caring for him. Because he has big, big responsibilities. Justice and righteousness. And being a voice a big ideas that require a lot of hard work. And a lot of resolution and a lot of determination. You know, you don't just go into the Civil Rights Center in Mississippi and talk about Medgar Evers and you gotta read every word from the paper. <laughs> At least he didn't say Medgar Evers is still doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> and then you talk. <laughs> used to say, don't tell me you love me if when I come home all the dishes are in the sink. <laughs> no, I said, you know me, we gotta get real. Yes. We gotta be real people. And the lessons of life are about being practical, about caring for God's people, about being concerned and compassionate and loving. 365 days of the year. And it's tough work. It's tough work. But God girds us up for the fight and for the battle. And it's all about preparing a way for God. It only is meaningful. It is only meaningful if we're prepared to do the hard work. We can't just show up in the good times. We gotta be there in the tough times. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us continue to press on. Hope, peace. This Sunday night when is about peace. This past week, 15 UN peacekeepers were killed in the Congo. Hardly a word about them. I suppose they're not heroes because they got killed. But they're heroes as far as I'm concerned. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers. Not the warmongers. Declaring Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Nonsense. Nonsense. Defeating the labor of those who've gone before. It's a lot of hard work. There are a lot of people who may not necessarily think like you and I think. But we still got to love them. 
Yesterday, my neighbor who is very ill, the driveway was all filled with snow. Now, you know, they say two angels and children, the devil and one of the <laughs> Lord and the other. When she told me who she voted for in November last <laughs> year. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lesser angel said to me, don't go on shovelness. <laughs> but a better angel prevailed. <laughs> and so I went and shoveled. I knocked on the door, I said, it drive me a shovel. She said, thank you, sweetheart. I said, God bless you. We have to appeal to the better angels in ourselves. Amen? Amen. Because everybody's not going to see eye to eye with us. But we're all God's children. We're all God's children. And peace comes about when we recognize that. And when we work being a community for the whole people of God. So may we, as leading up to this Christmas 2018, be a voice in the wilderness and be prepared to do the work that makes a highway.